Hello YouTube! Today in the Naughty Librarian, I am going over some bodice rippers that intrigue me. So you may have seen in my last video, I cleaned out my bodice ripper shelves. They had to... something had to go. <laughs> and I made a good dent, but there's also a lot of books that I wanted to keep. These were books that were like, ooh, this is intriguing, tell me more. <laughs> So I figured I'd do a little video telling you what's gonna stay on my shelves. Also, I have like a full bucket of wine. I just poured the, all that was left in the bottle into a glass and I'm like, yep, this is one glass for me. <laughs> and today I'm drinking a Pouille Fouisse. This is from Burgundy in France. It is Chardonnay based. It's quite like bright and vibrant and I like it. So it's a Pouille Fouisse. You guys always wanna know what I'm drinking. So I figured I'd just tell you guys what I'm drinking in the beginning of videos. Why don't I do that? <laughs> okay, let's get into some smutty delights that intrigue me. I was very intrigued by When You Wish Upon a Duke by Isabella Bradford, and this has such a feisty heroine. I love a feisty heroine. So Charlotte, she's a country girl. She likes riding horses, she doesn't like balls. Then one day, your family's like, hey Charlotte, you gotta go to London and marry the Duke of Marchborn. That's what you're doing. By the way, he's like super like decorous and she's like, oh, no, 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 this is not gonna go well. So she gets there and she's like, oh wow, like he's the Duke of Marchboard? Like my basement's flooded. <laughs> like she's really excited about it. And they're very flirty. They're doing well, like sexually. And you know, he, he's pushing her away because he has a dark past, I'm assuming. But yeah, I, I just like it. I like Charlotte. I think she's a fun heroine. So I definitely want to read this one. Also staying on my shelf, I have His Wicked Reputation by Madeline Hunter. And ooh, this is a rake with a heart of gold alert. I'm so into it. <laughs> so you have Gareth, right? He's a rake, I'm assuming with a heart of gold. And he goes to this like country estate he just inherited. And he's like, I'm gonna fix up the place. I got this. He gets there. There has been an art heist. He's like, oh, I need to get to the bottom of this. And then you have Eva. And she's just kind of clinging to her family's old gentry status, but really kind of, uh, you know, impoverished nobility kind of. And she makes a living by copying paintings and selling them. So I'm like, okay, she's a little shady, but in a fun way. And then, you know, they meet each other and then like the danger of their pants ignite. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that, but like, I love that I said that. Why hasn't that been in more books, The Dangers of Their Pants Ignite? I, I'm writing the books themselves, guys. <laughs> I'm also keeping Gentle Rogue by Joanna Lindsay. And Joanna Lindsay's a little hit or miss for me. I mean, Joanna Lindsay, OG romance novel author, but a lot of her books aren't necessarily my taste. So this is Georgina and James. And James, he's a former pirate. Now he's not a pirate, but he's still a captain of a ship. Georgina, she's like really heartsick. She wants to get back home to America. So she's like, I got it. I'm gonna sneak on this boat. I'm gonna disguise myself as a cabin boy, get on this boat. I got this. This is the best idea I've ever had. Oopsie daisy. She is now like the captain's like personal assistant. And she's like, oh no, he takes a lot of baths. <laughs> I'm assuming. I haven't got that far in the book. I only did the try chapter thing here, but I'm assuming there's going to be a bath that's going to be very awkward. <laughs> and this book came out in 1990. So this is like old school romance. And like, just look at that cover. Like, oh, the heaving bosoms, both his and hers. There's a lot of bosoms that are heaving on this cover and I'm into it. <laughs> Also staying on my shelves, I have Butterfly Swords by Jeannie Lin. This is a historical romance set in China's Tang Dynasty. And there are so few historical romances, you know, set outside of like Europe and America that I was like, oh, set in the Tang Dynasty in China? Tell me more. So we have a runaway princess, Ai Li. And she's like, I'm not marrying this guy. I'm taking off. I'm going to bring my butterfly swords. I'm out. And then she runs into Miles and she's like, hey, you got to help me not get married to this guy. And he's like, you know, like, I, ha I have some demons I'm working out, but like, okay, I'll help. <laughs> and then romance along the way. But I am so excited for like the whole premise of this book. I think it's going to be super cool. I am also keeping One Good Earl Deserves a Lover by Sarah McLean. I am hoping this is gonna be a good one. I did try a chapter challenge. I liked the first chapter. Sometimes Sarah McLean is a little hit or miss for me. They get too angsty, but I have like high hopes for this one. This is Pippa and Cross. Pippa, she is the bookish daughter of a Marquess. And you know, she's engaged to this guy who's just 
simple and whatever and she's like this is gonna be fine I'll marry this guy I'll live a quiet life with my dogs and I'll, I'll do science experiments like this is gonna be fine but like before that happens like I'm gonna go buck wild. So she's like, hey, cross, cross. He's like this kind of shadier guy. He owns a gaming hell. And she's like, hey, listen, do you wanna fuck? <laughs> I, I'm assuming she uses other language than that, but the blurb does mention that she propositions him. And he's like, what? I don't, what are feelings? I'm confused. And then, you know, romance. And I am excited for it. I'm just, the only thing that's gonna give me pause is if cross ends up being an asshole but not like like he can be grumpy like i don't mind grumpy guys but like asshole guys or like a when you cross the line from grumpy to cruel then I, I i take issue with it so we'll see how this goes but from the first chapter i was enjoying it so far definitely staying on my shelf i have unmasked by the marquess by cat sebastian so i have heard cat sebastian books referred to as like regency era but like everyone's bisexual and i was like yes I will have all of those books, please. <laughs> Charity is masquerading as a man named Robert Selby because uh, Charity is trying to get her sister married off to someone with money because they really don't have any and like Robert Selby is the way to do this. And Robert meets Alistair and Alistair is like, I like the way that guy fills out them britches. <laughs> and then eventually, eventually he finds out, oh, is a lady filling out them britches. I'm kind of still into it, but like now I'm confused. So like, I don't know how to feel about it yet, but like from the first chapter, I was enjoying this quite a bit and I do like the premise. I love that. Also staying on my shelf, I have The Highway Man by Kerrigan Byrne. And this is actually going to be a book of the month for the Blades and Bias Rippers Book Club in February. That show is gonna be on my channel, by the way. We all decided that we wanted something like so bodice rippery because like we were reading other things that aren't like a true ripping of the bodice. So we've all picked this one and we're like, yeah, this is the one. <laughs> now, Dorian, he's a ruthless villain. He's scarred and he has a lot of money. I don't think he's a duke, but like it's going into scarred duke territory and I love that. So already I'm in. And then you have Farah and he kind of just whisks her away to this highland manor and I, 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 it's low-key a little kidnappy which is like mm, this gives me pause however fair is like into it so i'm like well if she's into it <laughs> basically farah knows some shit that people are willing to kill her over and she's like hey i'm gonna go hang out with this guy he seems like a crazy guy but if he's on my side like dope <laughs> and so farah needs this protection ongoing so she's like hey dorian how about we get married, you protect me, and then you can know my secret to get your revenge on people, because that's his whole deal. He's very Count of Monte Cristo. He needs to go get revenge on people who've wronged him in the past, and the secret will help. So it's kind of a marriage of convenience. You've got a scarred Duke-ish character. You have all of this stuff that I am, like, obsessed with. So it's going to be a fun, bodice-rippery delight. Also staying is Falling into Bed with the Duke by Lorraine Heath. Now, this one, I really am interested in the concept. You have Minerva. She's had several seasons on the market here and um, very unsuccessful. So she's like, you know what? I'm gonna go over to this club. It's like a fuck club though. It's like a club where ladies wear masks and they can pick a guy and just have at it. So it's a big sex club. And she's like, I got this. So she goes and then she has kind of having this ongoing affair with the Duke of Ashbury. Like, she knows who he is. And then he eventually figures out who she is. And he's like, I really like Minerva. Like, I'm gonna go court her in real life. And like, real life Minerva's like, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't, no, no. <laughs> she doesn't want this. But he's like, but like, we've already done it. Like, I've thoroughly seduced you already. Like, I'm just trying to put a ring on it, lady. <laughs> So I kind of like that they're kind of going about this relationship ass backwards and it's like a fun concept to play with. So I'm into this. I'm also keeping While the Duke Was Sleeping by Sophie Jordan. I am assuming this is much like the uh, the 90s rom-com While You Were Sleeping. Uh, there you have this shop girl, Poppy. She's obsessed with this Duke. And like he comes into like the shop every day and gets flowers and shit. And she's like in love with him. One day he's gonna get run over by like a cart or a carriage or something and she like pushes him out of the way but he hits his head and he's knocked out he's sleeping and and everyone's like oh my gosh you must love him a lot because you saved him is he your fiance and she's like yup <laughs> 
which already, bad choice. And then this guy walks up. He's like, I'm taking him home. He, she's like, I don't know who the fuck you are. You could be, like, molesting this guy. I am not letting him go with you. Like, I'm his fiance. And he's like, bitch, he's my brother. No, you're not. <laughs> and then you have kind of this enemies to lovers arc with Struan and, and Poppy. And, of course, they're going to end up together because, like, screw this guy. He's asleep the whole time. Screw the Duke. Like, no one likes him. <laughs> so you have, like, gruff Scotsman and shop girl Poppy. And I'm like, yes, give me all of that. Like, I was iffy about the first chapter of this book because it's kind of stupid. But then I was like, you know, I want to see where the stupidity goes. Like, I feel like it could be satisfying if I just let go of expectations. My Fair Lover by Nicole Jordan. I got rid of some stuff by Nicole Jordan, but this one intrigues me. So this is Catherine and Brandon. Catherine is, you know, kind of like an innocent lady of the ton, but like feisty and stuff. Brigands are after her because they're trying to steal her lost family fortune. It's like a whole thing. Then Brandon, he's a guy. He like spurned her six years ago. She's not over it. However, he's just like, you know, I'm not going to deflower a virgin and like peace out on my boat because I'm a privateer. <laughs> so he's like doing the right thing kind of. And now he's back in her life and he's inherited a title and he's like, hey, lady, like, I know we didn't like leave things great, but like you need to make me not awful. Like how do I act with people? How do I person? <laughs> so she's gonna help him like fit in with a ton. He needs to take an appropriate wife and like low keys is like, I'm gonna marry the shit out of Catherine and she doesn't know it yet. But like, I don't know, I'm into it. I just, I don't know what it is about privateers and pirates. I'm like, maybe just cause I read Treasure Island recently. I don't know, but like I'm into that right now. Also staying is If You Dare by Cresley Cole. So Cresley Cole did write a series of like historical Highlander romances and I haven't read them yet. And like I have read literally everything by Cresley Cole, but I haven't read this series. Why, why am I like this? So this is Cortland and Analia. And basically um, they both hate this guy, Pascal. They're in this thing, they're in the battle and like um, Cortland's like, you know what, Pascal, you kind of fucking suck. I'm gonna go kill you now. And Pascal's like, you know what? I was planning on this. And he tries to get Cortland killed and Cortland's like, no, 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 no. So Cortland, he grabs Analia and he takes off with her. And Analia is Pascal's fiance. The thing is, she doesn't like either of these dudes. She's like, Cortland, you kidnapped me. You're a fucking barbarian. I don't like this. However, Pascal can suck a bag of dicks too. So it's like, what's a girl gonna do? I'm also gonna keep The Truth About Lord Stoneville by Sabrina Jeffries. I actually kept a few books by Sabrina Jeffries because like so far I was like into her writing style. This one has a very similar plot to one of my fave Tessa Dare books. Oliver, he has spent his life being a rake hill, mainly because like his parents died in this tragic accident. There was a big scandal. And the way he deals with that is just by like fucking his way across town, I guess. You know, he's a bit of a rake. And he's so much of a rake that his grandma's like, listen, bro, if you don't get your shit together, I'm disinheriting you. Go marry someone and be normal. And he's just like, you got it, grandma. I can do that. So he's like, I'm gonna get a lady from a brothel and bring her home. Grandma's gonna have a conniption. And he's like way into this idea. But then he meets Maria and she's an American and she is like going through a tough time. She's like, hey, I'm looking for my lost fiance. He's over here somewhere. I don't know what happened to him. And he's just like, oh, like I'll help you find your fiance. But first let's go see my grandma. <laughs> So it's kind of like a fake dating situation and there's like peril and like a rake with a heart of gold. And I'm like, love that. Love it, love it, love it. It's very reminiscent of Tessa Dare. So I have high hopes for this one. Fingers crossed I still like it in the end. I am also keeping Fallen by Celeste Bradley. Now, this was one that I wasn't into when I first started reading that chapter because I was like, oh gosh, like this is going to be bad. But then like the end of the chapter, I'm like, you know, it's turning itself around a bit. So we're following Izzy and Julian. Izzy, she's a bit of a spinster, but you know, she still wants romance and like a, an affection and like something hot in the sheets. She still wants all that stuff. And you know, one night she's just kind of like having good like saucy dreams. And all of a sudden she's like, these dreams feel really real. And she wakes up and she's like, oh fuck, there's a guy in my bed. He's going to do things to me. She screams, the whole house wakes up and they're all like, oh, rape. They're like freaking out. They're this guy was like taking advantage of her because she knocked him out and then there's like the reasons why she eventually said oh no you, you misunderstand um he just surprised me but he's he's my fiance we're, we're engaged he's my fiance so like 
it's just like a lover's tryst thing. Like, it's not like assault. Like, everyone needs to relax. And I was like, why is she protecting this guy? But like, there's reasons for it and I don't know the whole story yet because like, you only kind of find out the start of the reason at the end of the first chapter. And I was like, I want to see where this goes because we don't really know anything about Julian. Besides, he was kind of drunk and he thought he was going to this other lady's bedroom and it was really dark and he was doing stuff. And then he finally started realizing like, hey, these aren't the boobs I'm used to. And then she's, she knocked him out. So, you know, like I think things might have stopped at that point, but <laughs> it's definitely an odd start to a relationship. And I'm excited to see where this one goes. Also staying on my shelf is Her Night with the Duke by Diana Quincy. And I have been obsessed with Diana Quincy. Like, I haven't read any of her stuff, but I'm already obsessed with her because I hear such good things that, like, I want to read this so bad. So this is Leela and Elliot. And Leela, she's, like, going to this, like, travel, like, in thing and she's getting accosted by ruffians and Elliot's like no 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 and he like helps her like fight off the ruffians and they're like all horned up from fighting off these bad guys and then like they have a night of passion together and they're gonna go their separate ways whoopsie daisy turns out <laughs> Elliot was going the same direction as Leela because he's supposed to marry her stepdaughter <laughs> so Oh boy, that is gonna be an awkward breakfast. <laughs> but you know, obviously he's not gonna marry the stepdaughter. He's totally gonna get with Layla. And I'm like, yes, you should. It's weird that you fucked her mom. Like you can't marry this girl anymore. I'm just really into Diana Quincy right now. It's like an author that I'm like, ooh, there's so much buzz about. I'm so excited to get into. Also staying is A Daring Arrangement by Joanna Shoup. And Joanna Shoup is an author I wanna read more from. Like I haven't always had a lot of success, but the plots are always super intriguing. And I did like how the first chapter of this one went so far. So, so far, so good. Honora, she's like, hey, I want to marry this artist, but my family's like not cool with it. So I got to make them cool with it. So what I got to do, I got to find like the worst fiance in the world and introduce him. And since he's so horrible and when he goes away and I say, well, can I marry the artist? Like my, pa my family's just going to think he's, he's a godsend because the other guy was so bad. So she has a plan. <laughs> In comes Julius and he's like a bit of a rake and she's like, you're perfect. And he's like, all right, I'll do it. But the thing is, he starts acting like very nice, charms her parents, charms everybody. And she's like, you are doing it wrong. You're supposed to be a rake. You're supposed to be bad. Like, I don't know. Just could your pants fall down? Could you do something weird? And he's just like, Nah, I'm nice. <laughs> so it's like best laid plans that go awry. And I'm like, I, I feel like I'm really gonna like the relationship. It's a bit fake dating. It might be a bit antagonistic to lovers. I'm like really into all of it so far. Also staying is My Kind of Earl by Vivian Lorette. And who oh boy, this is kind of like a reverse My Fair Lady. So you have Jane and she one day she's like, oh, I'm gonna research a book I wanna write. So I'm gonna go to a brothel. So she goes, right? And then whoopsie daisy starts a huge brawl. Enter Raven. He's like, hey lady, you need to get out of here because you started this brawl. And Raven, he was like an orphan. He grew up in like the rough side of town, but he has this like really unique birthmark on his arm. And she's like, oh shit, I know that birthmark. You're like this like nobility guy. And he's just like, yes, yes I am. Can you prove this? <laughs> so like they kind of get together because he's like, hey lady, you're my ticket. You're my ticket to figure out where my past was, where my family is do I have money? Like, what the fuck? Like, she's gonna help him. And she kind of gives him ton lessons to make him like a proper gentleman. And uh, so far, I'm like, the brawl in the brothel was a great opener to this book and I wanna see where it goes. Also staying, I have How the Duke Was Won by Lenora Bell. Again, feisty heroine, super into her. So this is Charlene. And then she gets like the offer of a lifetime to go pose as her legitimate sister, cause she's kind of illegitimate and go to this Duke's house because the Duke, his name is James. He's a bit of a wild child, but he needs to marry someone. So he invites like four ladies over to his house for the weekend. He's like, all right, I'm just gonna pick one of them. And so she's gonna go in her sister's stead and like try to seduce a Duke and her sister's like name and stuff. And of course, like it's gonna come to light and then like gotta fall in love for real. And I kind of love like comedy of errors, mistaken identity stuff, sometimes. Like when it's done right, it's great. When it's done poorly, it's like, oh, not good. But this one seems fun. Like I'm into it really. Like I'm into it. The first chapter is really fun so far. 
How to Romance a Rake by Manda Collins. And oh boy, this is gonna have like nice girl gone feisty, which is another trope I'm like super into. So we have Juliet, right? She's a bit um, kind of an outsider, a little bit of an, like an indoor kid, we'll say. <laughs> and she goes to this ball and people are being mean to her. And she's like, well, well, like I'm being picked on and I'm like not comfortable. And then Alec, he's just like, hey, bitches, like this is my party and y'all are being dicks. Hey, Juliet, you want to go dance? Let's go dance. Like, so he kind of just rescued us from bullies. So I'm like, okay, rake with a heart of gold into it. But the thing is, Juliet has his friend who went missing in like the London underworld. So like the seedier parts of town. And he's like, oh shit, your friend's missing? Like I'll help. But it turns out like he has secrets of his own that might be entwined with this like mystery. And you know, it, they also, you know, they're probably gonna do it a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I really, I really like this heroine, you know, shy but feisty. When it's done right, it's, it's, ooh, it's so good, Mwah, chef's kiss. But when it's done poorly, it's like, Mwah. but I, I'm thinking this one's done pretty well. The Worst Duke in the World by Lisa Byrne. And this one is like, ooh, like reluctant love. And I kind of like that. You have Anthony, right? And he's the worst duke in the world. Basically what he's got to do is find a new marriage. I think he, he had an old marriage. Maybe she died. I think she died. And um, he basically has to remarry, make a spare to go with the heir he already has, all that kind of stuff. But he has no interest in it. And he's like, my first marriage was fucking awful. Like, I don't want to get married again. I just want to go be a good dad to my son. I want to like hang out with this pig I have. He really, he has this pig he named Duchess and he like loves this pig. It's like a little cute pig friend. And he's like, I just want to do my own thing. And then this lady Jane comes along. And of course, she's just snow whiting herself all over this place because she makes friends with the kid and the kid's like hey Jane is really cool dad and, and the dad's like okay I'll be the judge of this oh my gosh Jane Jane is really pretty and junk and like he's like oh no feelings I have feelings <laughs> it's one of those stories where he's just very reluctant to get back into another relationship which is like understandable but also you know irresistible and I love stories like that last up I have hit me with your best Scott by Suzanne Enoch like for starters, great name. Hit me with your best Scott. Mm, I love the pun. <laughs> so this is Cole and Persephone. Cole is kind of a, like a wild Highlander type of guy. And his mother's like, listen, you got to get fucking married. And he's just like, ugh, fine, whatever. I'm not into it. Like, I'll think about it. And then he meets Persephone and she is a lady on the run. She's in hiding. People want to kill her because she knows some shit and she's really smart and she's really cool. And Cole's like, you're really smart and cool. Oh, people are trying to kill you? Like, I got this. Like, I got a sword. I got a bunch of stuff. I don't back down from fights. Like, I will beat the shit out of them. You got this, lady. <laughs> so it's a very Lindsay Sandsian kind of historical romance with like Highlanders and stuff. So I'm like, I'm always love a good like Lindsay Sands-esque story. And I'm super excited about this one. Okay, so those are the books I decided to keep in my massive clean out. There's a whole bunch of them. Hopefully I'm just gonna like pull some out every month and just get them read. And hopefully, hopefully like this first chapter challenge pans out and I like all these books. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below. Um, I don't know, what's like a historical romance that you know of that you haven't read yet, but you totally really want to read? What is it? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye!